episode of the Book Fix Podcast, a podcast that saves lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Yehida. And I'm your host, Chelly. Hello. <sighs> Chelly, <laughs> I've missed you. I've missed you too. It's been cold as fuck. Dude, yeah, no I, okay, I have book tea, but it's kind of like weird. Like it's not specifically author book tea or book drama. Okay. So okay. I read this post about um a graphic novel that's getting created but apparently mm-hmm. all of the art in the graphic novel is ai generated and i don't know if you like hear the <laughs> debate about that so so the hands don't look like hands <laughs> <laughs> okay you kind of get it okay with ai generated art people uh-huh. kind of don't agree with things being generated like that because the way for it to generate it is to borrow art from other sources other artists to, yeah yeah in order that. to generate it so mm-hmm. um there is they a book with ai generated art and their main character literally looks like zendaya <laughs> really wait and is it technically borrowing isn't it stealing that's like, stealing it right art from Be- other artists yes it is stealing i would say so anyway yeah. because i did see uh many artists on twitter pretty much like just being upset when ai mm-hmm. like this I, ai generator was you know whenever it came out it feels like it was recent and i i don't know i i hate that plus it always like the details aren't really there no they're not and it's it's also not great because i've seen ai generated art and not mm-hmm. not specifically that book but just like on twitter on tiktok on instagram i guess mm-hmm. sometimes when it pulls from other artists it'll also pull their watermark and their signature so it's like you're not even <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you're not god. even going to try to take that off <laughs> yeah well i mean i guess it makes sense it's a fucking bot but still that's that sucks yep so yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. I don't know what it's called. I feel like it's already out. No, I mean I didn't hear about that, but that should be interesting. I don't think that I would want to support that though. No, I don't think I would either. But I I saw it and I and I thought of you and Zendaya. Oh, wow, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Me and Zendaya in the same sentence. Love that. <laughs> so today we are going to be talking about Legend Born by Tracy Dion. So at the beginning of our episodes, we like to give a spoiler free ish summary because after that summary, you know, you can think or decide if you haven't read this yet. Maybe you want to go read this before you listen to the rest of this episode. And after the summary, we're going to hella spoil. OK, mm-hmm. so let me give you my summary. Legend Born is a YA urban fantasy book that takes place mainly on the UNC Chapel Hill campus. At the beginning of the story, before going off to school, Bree Matthews loses her mother to a car accident. But as she's in the station with the officer relaying the news to her, she notices a glimmer that she won't understand until later in the story. Once she's in school, she goes to a cliff diving party with her best friend Alice, and that's where she experiences that the world isn't exactly what it seems when she witnesses a monster being killed by a group of students that goes to her same school. Wow. Short, sweet, and to the point. This book exactly. is really long. so Really it, long. Really dense. Yeah. And we are going to try our best to get through it, but we usually don't talk about everything in these episodes. So I recommend go read it and then come back. If you don't want to do that, you know what? I can't ask you to do things you don't want to do. Thank you. And <laughs> we would recommend this book to anyone who likes the chosen one trope, to anyone who likes books with like intricate magic systems, uh, love triangles, mm, mm-hmm. fantasy. fantasy. Ur- I mean, urban fantasy. Sorry. Yep. Uh, yeah, I can't really think of anything else. Dealing with grief. Oh, yes. Dealing with grief. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. So. Or I guess we should say like books that know how to deal with grief yeah oh wow call everyone else out not those fake grief books <laughs> okay so yeah Hira and i don't tell each other how we feel about these books when we're reading it so we did promise each other last episode that we're going to try to be short and sweet when we guess the other person's um rating, rating. so why don't mm. you guess mine first well the reason why we're going to be short and sweet is because sometimes we tend to project how we're feeling onto the other person's rating or review 
Yeah, but let's not like point fingers. Like it could be either of them. It's you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I feel like I've done it before, but I, I always like pay attention to what you say. And then I realize that you say it again when, in your overall thoughts. Oh, dude, and I'm just no. like, oh, that's so funny. It's okay. Though. Oh my God. I love you. And I don't know if you feel the same way, but you can tell a lot by the first person who guesses. <laughs> what do you mean? Like if you're going to guess first, I feel like that's harder on you. Because then if you guess like a, let's, not talking about this book, if, if you guess a one, I could be like, oh, yeah, Hyra didn't like it. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Wow. You I'm know sorry. what? I feel like we should start rolling dices. That'd be fun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking give you a random ass number. No explanation needed. Um. Okay. So my guess, you did, oh, shit. We're not going to give explanations. I'm going to guess that you would give it a 3.75. Because you can do that on Storygraph, by the way. Exactly. Shout out to Storygraph. That's so funny because um, I'm going to guess that you would give this one higher, a 4.75. <laughs> I think you're just right on top. Mm, okay. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Okay, so why don't we start off by talking about the way that this book starts. And it starts with a prologue where, as I explained in the summary... Brie Matthews, you know, gets the unfortunate news that her mother passes away, her passed away in a car accident. And in this moment, I really love the way that it's written because she's speaking in a way where she's already dealing with the grief, right? Because she's not really yes. taking it in. She's yeah. kind of disassociating in the moment, but she does notice that as the officer is talking to her, she notices this like weird glimmer. And you can attribute it to her just, you know, not really being in the moment because mm -hmm. as she's listening, she's also telling herself like, oh, now this, I'm going to be, or I guess the way that she says it is way more eloquently than I'm going to, but is she's like seeing herself now as an after Brie. So after Brie is her after losing her mother. Yes. And it's someone who someone who definitely has like a like a like a outer shell now. And yeah. that's how our story starts off. And we also learn that the last conversation that she had with her mother was them arguing. So that would obviously make losing yeah. her even worse. Okay, I want to I want to double check. I want to fact check because um yeah. She wasn't in the car with her mom, right? Her mom had gone no. alone. No, no, no. She wasn't in the car with her mom, no. Okay, so it was just she had heard after the fact and then her and her dad went to the hospital after. So her and her dad were home and I believe they got a phone call and that's when they went off to the station. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And I'm guessing she was 15. 16? She's 16 because, because this story really only takes place within like two weeks. And yeah. when she loses her mother three months later, she goes off to this college that right. actually her mother went to as well. And it was like because she's still a teenager. It's like this early start type of college. So you I get know because it's, it's weird that she's 16 and yeah. she's going there. But, I, you know, she was she's able to do early admissions. Yep. And she's super bright. And her dad and her kind of agreed that if she needed space away from home to not mm -hmm. be reminded about what happened, if she mm -hmm. does well at school, then he will allow her to go to this school. Yeah, because I, I really like that the dad remains present in her life. I mean, he's obviously not there with her throughout the whole journey, but we do see him come and go with like phone calls and he's always checking up on her. And he does tell her if I find out that you are, you know, screwing around or just, you know, dealing with grief in a way that he wouldn't appreciate, you know, if like yep. she goes off the deep end or something. He's like, yep. I'm going to I'm going to pull you out of the school. If it's not and helping you. I don't know if you felt the same way, but the dad was so realistic in his phone calls. Very yeah. dad like, like with the way that he spoke about it. And you can mm -hmm. tell that he also really cared for her because there was this one point where he was like, mm, you're kind of doing what the book says because he read a book I on know. grief. Oh. <laughs> God, he's I such a good love dad because he doesn't know how to because obviously what i also appreciated was the conversation of him losing his wife and uh, brie losing her mom and even though they're both dealing with grief they're both dealing it in very different ways mm -hmm. and so he has to you know be present for brie and the way that he goes about it is like he'll try to like read into books and he even tells her eventually like you know what you need to go to therapy like I need to make sure that you are actually working through this and not just you know shutting off. Yeah. 
So like Yahira said, uh, Brie goes to college early and she doesn't go alone. She goes with her best friend, Alice. Mm -hmm. And um, is it the first night where they go off campus? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is (laughs) because they end up going to like this cliff diving party. Oh, you're right. And and what I... (sighs) What I appreciate about this book is, you know, our main character is black. It's written by a black author. Mm -hmm. And in many of these moments, it feels like Brie is the only black person in the room. And like we go through all of like her microaggressions, like people just don't know how to talk to her. And also with the microaggressions, you know, people know that she lost her mom, too. So they don't know how to bring that up. And Mm -hmm. she makes a comment that I really like. I think I know what you're talking about. And she basically says that when people talk to her, they talk to her in a way where they almost like feel forced to say something Mm -hmm. in a certain way because it makes them feel like, oh, my God, I'm such a good person because I said it this way or I brought it up like this. And I just really like the way that this story discusses grief. Mm -hmm. I do, too. So um, they go to this off campus party and this is the party where everything kind of falls apart. And yeah. is this the party where Bree sees Cell for the first time? Yeah. So she starts to notice, like, let's, I think it's like a demon, and the people around her don't really see it until it starts wreaking havoc. Mm-hmm. And that's when uh, she sees Selwyn and Victoria fight this demon off and pretty much kill it. And Selwyn starts to like mesmer them so like he starts erasing their memories or yeah. manipulating their memories so that they don't remember exactly what happened and he does it to Bree, and she doesn't know it at the time but it's like weird it, like she shouldn't be able to just get her memory back right she shouldn't be yeah. able to just br- not not be affected by this mesmer oh and, and so just to mention too when she was mesmered so was the people that were with her so yeah. when Cell tried doing this, everyone around her, including her at the time, were like, oh, we got to go home. And they just start heading back. And it isn't until like a few minutes pass where she's like, what am I doing? Like, I was yeah. over there. And that's yeah, because where- it starts coming back to her, which yes. I, I thought was amazing. Like, I really love the magic system in this book. Mm-hmm. That's where she saw Cell and Tor fight this creature. And also there were like four college boys that were there. And um, in order to make sure they didn't remember, I guess that was the point, right? Because Cell kind of fucks them up. Yeah. Yeah. He starts messing with them. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. This I this feels like it was pretty far into the book. I don't know if it was just because I was it reading wasn't. it slow. Okay, it really I was reading, I was reading it at 1.5 speed, so it took a while to get there. Yeah. <laughs> Usually I, I listen at like three times speed. <laughs> to anyone who hasn't listened to us talk about books before, Chelly finishes books really quickly. This took you like two weeks. Yeah, because I knew it was thick and I don't know if I told you this. I have two coworkers that love this book and the series. So when I told mm, them that I was I reading know. this, um, mm-hmm. they they told me that they wanted me to appreciate it. So I've been I, I I like took it slow because I they want me to talk about it with them too. I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, so I I did, and it took me a while to get to this point. But just just to say that <laughs> I really this is like, like second chapter, <laughs> no, first chapter. You know, I think. it took me maybe like ten. 10 days because days. Yeah. <laughs> you know the weekends are reserved for me to take notes on this but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no when i got to this point you're right i really like how they fleshed out brie because mm-hmm. i don't know if you feel the same way and this is probably because it's written by a black author but sometimes it feels like um a character can have characteristics and then they're never talked about again i like that yeah like you said, how Brie noticed every mi- microaggression or how she mm-hmm. noticed how people would say things differently or even and just to bring it up, not to completely talk about it, like when there's workers and it's like, oh, all of these workers are people of color. I am the only colored person here that is not a worker. Yeah. Like she, she will notice yeah. these things. And I, I do appreciate that. And we saw that up until this point, too, even though it was still chapter two. But, but um, also... Also, just the fact that she is such a bright student. So even when she's talking with the principal or, or just talking to anyone of like power in the school, mm-hmm. like a lot of them will constantly berate her 
like subtly like they'll be like oh i don't even know how you ended up here you know like they're trying to downplay her achievements and her you know because just her brightness i think the dean even mentions like was it a scholarship was it a scholarship yeah (laughs) oh my god the fucking dean pissed me off Yeah. yeah he kept like trying to make it seem like oh you're here on a scholarship if you mess up again then you know then I, I think he I think this offense of them going off campus to go to like a party is like expulsion worthy. Right. I'm pretty sure. Yes. But because her best are... friend Alice was so mad at her because she was oh. like, oh, okay. well, we we went to this party because you wanted to or but whatever. Can I say because mm-hmm. Alice, when she's first introduced, she's very like um, quick, witty or quick and witty. Like with, uh-huh. with her responses. So yeah. if something is not going right, she's like, mm, not my best friend anymore. You know, apply again later, I guess. And yeah, that's well, just... they, it, they have a really good banter together. Yes. And I don't know. I can't remember how long they've been friends, but it's been for a minute now. Oh. And I, I really love their relationship together. But they do kind of go through this falling out yes. through the, the story. Falling out hurt, though. Like it, it really did. It I felt so, like you didn't have to say that. Because they basically get called to the dean's office after their first day of walking mm-hmm. off campus. And both of them get called out. And Bree tries to defend or defend her friend Alice and say, mm-hmm. like, oh, it wasn't her choice to go. I made her go with me. And the dean's like, oh, did, did, was she handcuffed to you? Is that how she yeah. went? She wasn't? Yeah. Okay, then she chose to go. And I mean, I, I get that 1000%. I get that argument. So mm-hmm. I just really, it hurt when Alice walked out and she was just like, you know what? I noticed that you don't even try anymore. Like all of your classes that you're taking are like basic <sighs> classes. Are you just yeah. here to like, like you're around? not Like you're not even applying yourself anymore. And, I, and oh. it sucks because I think that Alice doesn't really know how to deal with Bree's grief either. So... In, in moments like this one, she just kind of like blows up on her where she's just like, oh, it's because, you know, you, you're still dealing with this. And, you know, I don't even know who you are anymore. And it's like to Brie, she doesn't mm-hmm. really see it that way. So when mm-hmm. Alice just brings it up that way, it's like very aggressive. And you know? it sucks, too, because remember, Brie just saw two students doing magic. So mm-hmm. she's like okay, I understand we were about to get expelled, but I saw this boy. And then Alice is like, okay, oh now we're talking God. about boys. Like, is that what we're fucking doing? And Dude, I, oh. Alice was pissed. Yeah. She was like, are you really going to talk about a boy right now? Uh-huh. And it's like, damn, Alice, let her talk. <laughs> Alice, please. It's not I, like that. I kind of wish that Alice would have been a little bit more involved with Bree's journey of, you know, figuring out these like secret societies because it kind of sucked that she was just left in the dark and yes. then they didn't really have, I don't know, they didn't really have that many interactions with each other, especially because this story kind of focused more so on Bree's mm-hmm. journey alone and also Bree's like journey with, you know, uncovering what really happened to her mother and dealing with these two boys. You know what I would have liked too, because I like I'm a little different on that. I kind of do like that she was kept in the dark, but I mm-hmm. would have appreciated if, even though Brie didn't tell her everything, she would still offer her help and advice. Like I do, just wish that she was more there as a friend, even if they were still but fighting. Alice was too proby, though. Like I don't remember exactly why, but don't you remember when she called Brie's dad and like? ratted her out Dude, pretty much. how did you feel about that i was pissed i was like are you fucking kidding me? like i understand why she would do it because she's actually yeah. genuinely concerned for her but like still like don't involve don't involve the parents like please if anyone did that to me oh my god i'd be uh, pissed mr In Bree's dad hi this is alice yeah it's me <laughs> mr Bree's dad mr Bree's dad <laughs> uh, i love that we've spent so much fucking time talking about <laughs> Brie and Alice when literally this story isn't even about Brie and Alice. So that was the first two pages. So Yeah, no, literally. <laughs> no, but it, it kind of sets up like her relationship with others though because the dean basically says, you know what, you girls can stay because mm. I'm so nice but you so guys nice. have to have um, I mentor. guess they're like two Oh, mentors. No, it's a mentor. Yeah. And they basically have to stick with them all year. And I think Brie even mentions like, oh, that's just the babysitter. It's like, yeah, because yeah. girls don't fucking know how to stay on campus. So <laughs> they mm-hmm. each get kind of like their own person. 
And Bree's mentor is Nick. Nick Davis, yeah. Yeah. Who and is... Nick Davis is definitely like the golden retriever good guy. Mm. Like a, just like a really nice person. Wait, wait. And wait. Huh? what do you think I feel about Nick? How do you, you think love I him? feel about him? I think you love him because his name is Nick. <laughs> Dude, how did you yes, know? Yes, <laughs> I know that you love Nick. <laughs> I didn't even make that connection, but thank you. I do really like the name Nick and mm. I love him. Thank you. Because of He's such a beautiful boy. And he is like A plus student, perfect at everything. And it's funny because the first time they meet, he was just like, you see that I was here? It's because I knew that you were going to be in this building. And I um, kind of like he like spaced it out like he knew exactly where she was going to be. And he was like, and I was five minutes early, bitch. Not bitch, queen. But like he he basically is super sweet and is willing to help her. And you can tell at first she doesn't want to really trust him. But he's just so like charismatic mm-hmm. and kind of tries to relate to her too. Is like, oh, you try jumping off that cliff? Hmm. I remember when I was a freshman. (laughs) He's like, I remember those fucking days when I had no brain. No, but what I really liked from the very beginning of their relationship, I think I believe they were walking somewhere together. And that's when Brie notices a demon, which they're known as the Shadowborn in this world. And, you know, normal people, which they're known as the Onceborn, they they can't perceive these demons. They don't really, they they can't notice them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Nick is immediately like, surprised that Brie can even see this demon and then she sees Nick fight the demon and I think he went um, no he does win but doesn't she get hurt she gets hurt he does in the process. Win because it, she was and he was basically cornering himself and she mm-hmm. called the demon to follow her and that's where he's kind of shocked that she can see it too and yeah it and follows then she, her and she does a thing to kind of block herself mm-hmm. and she feels like her arms are on fire Right. Yes, I do remember that. And so she does end up getting hurt, and then he takes her to like this. What? What is he like? A healer? Yes. To William, who's the healer of you know this secret society, and she kind of just starts piecing things together because she lets out that you know Cell did mesmer her and when nick finds that out he's like what do you mean he mesmered you and it didn't work like you can Mm -hmm. never you can never let him know that it didn't work and she doesn't really understand like the importance of that she doesn't understand anything but then she starts piecing together like oh wait this is because she starts getting fragments of like memories back and the same thing happened with like what happened to her mother so she starts to realize like, oh, like my mother's death had something to do with this secret society. And she almost thinks that they're like responsible for it. Yeah. And well, so obviously she remember, she's pissed. Yeah. And remember at that point when she was being healed, um, she has her memories again. Because remember, there's after Brie and before Brie. And mm-hmm. she feels a memory coming up of uh, like replaying when her mom died and she found out. And Mm -hmm. it happens a lot. And sometimes she just has to ride through it and see the whole memory. But this Mm -hmm. time when she sees it, um, the part where the police officer reveals that um, the mom passes away or passed Mm -hmm. away, um, Mm -hmm. he says something else. And she was like, why would I remember it like that if that's not how it was? So that's when she starts kind of questioning. Maybe this is different than what I thought it was. Maybe there is like this magic maybe something is involved in this but like you said nick is um completely shocked that she was able to remember anything after getting mesmered but then you can hear i think cell coming down the hall and he's like okay you stay here i'll (laughs) i'll talk to him and stuff and it's as soon as he leaves she's like i'm out like i'm not staying yeah she (sighs) does not listen to him at all because she just doesn't care and she also thinks that you know this secret society had something to do with her mother's death and so she starts to kind of like try to become a part of it to uncover that truth and i kind of hated this moment because nick was also supposed to be a part of this group but he really didn't want to so he found a way to just you know get out of it and so because he was not a part of it anymore, it was Cell who was taking the reins of, you know, the leader role when it was supposed yes. to be Nick. Yes. And so when Bree goes to, you know, their place, she's just like, oh, I'm here 
because Nick is going to sponsor me. Like, totally. And the people there are like, Nick? What? He's going to, he's coming back? Oh my God. And they're so excited about it. And so Nick, like, he immediately liked her. I would almost say this is like insta love. And he immediately liked her. So he was so down for it. Like, he didn't want to. He really didn't want to come back to this society. But because she was getting so. She was getting so involved. He was like, yeah, I'm going to sponsor her. Right. Yeah, but he was like kind of down, right? Like, I know he wasn't Mm, happy with it. Not really. He didn't want to help her. He wanted to help her, but he did not want to go back to this society, like this um, legend born, because they're known as legend born. All of these people who fight off the shadow born. And Mm. he didn't want to do that anymore. And so I kind of felt for him. Like, I feel so bad because, of course, I understand Bree's motivation. Like, she wanted to find out what was going on with her mother. But I really hated that it forced Nick to do something that he didn't want to do, which was, you know, be integrated with the legend born again. Isn't it kind of also fucked up that she doesn't figure out all of his connections and his, like, desire to not be in it until after they're already sworn to each other yeah it's 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 a way after where she's like oh my gosh he's king arthur's descendant i um what was the other one if one of them dies well i don't even know if we, we even said it but like this story is um has Arthurian legend. So, you oh, know, yeah. King Arthur and the round table and all that shit. I honestly never really got into that, but I think it's a cool concept, especially in yeah. this book and the way that it, you know, talks about it or connects mm-hmm. to it. So I'm, I'm just going to say it now because, yeah. So all of these like people, like the King Arthur and his round table, they, kind of went through like this i don't know if it was like a curse or just some sort of like spell that would tie in any descendants to them so like that way if they were killed off like in generations later there would still be someone who would be in you know a part of this round table and so they people go through like this sort of awakening when they realize like oh i'm supposed to be connected to blank you know or i'm supposed to be this person and so yeah that's that's just also something else that the story integrated with Mm -hmm. you know the arthurian legends um i don't remember exactly when this happens but there is a point where they have to go into the woods to swear an oath and is this the part where cell and brie like they walk alone with each other right um aren't they alone when they're doing the the trials oh, oh oh, you're right you're right okay but i know they, they have an oath in the woods and i think cell is the first one to bring up like i think this girl's a demon and he's like hella against her even mm-hmm. being from there. the very beginning he did not trust her at all and i feel like it's really interesting because as we learn about cell's character we realize that cell has like this devotion to nick so he's just trying to take care of him right and he does not trust brie at all And we find out that it's because he's also, you know, shadow born and he feels that in Brie as well because they feed off of energy. They feed off of uh, emotions. And so since Brie is going through her grief, she is very much filled with anger. And so that's why he kind of like gets that vibe off of her. But it's hella misinterpreted. It just seems like sells a bad guy. Um, and I think this is where we also see Nick's dad because he tells Sal, like, you know what? It's good. She's good. She's yeah. good. And then that's where Nick and Bree have to fake the oath that they give each other. Well, it introduces a lot of characters because after the oath, we get to see kind of a little bit of everyone. We get to see. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. I'm going to fuck up the names. Felicity. <laughs> <laughs> right oh, yeah. felicity uh there's a guy named will who everyone loves he's a great guy he's the healer um then there's brie nick and Cell, and we learn that there's like a lot of like connections to the legend born like there's a network of people so it's like the vassals the squires that's the only two i remember yeah, there's a there's a lot of levels in this story. They do bring up um, that there is a lot of levels to this story, but there's also Merlin's descendants. And yeah. those are people like Cell who are supposed to protect um, 
the ether or no, they're supposed to protect the order. And that's yeah. what, what you were saying. That, that's why Cell is so protective of Nick, because that's kind of his job. Yeah, he's his Merlin, like his king's mage. And through this, you know, through these moments, Brie also realizes that Nick is like an heir to Arthur. Or well, that's what they assume, right? Like yes. that's what Nick's father believes too. Like he's like, oh, he's Arthur's heir. And so that's why he is, you know, taking this leadership role. And also like everybody loves Nick. Like he's yeah. very much like just like a really good person. And there is a moment when they have to go through like trials, right? Like to become a squire, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Yes. And through one of these trials, um, Sal and Bree are alone together. And that's when this like hellhound comes out. And this hellhound is kind of like feeding off of Sal's magic or his ether. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, Bree kills it, right? Yes, Brie like, does kill she, it. She kills this um, hellhound. and She Cell... didn't mean to, though, because she like yeah. raised her hand to defend herself, and then it was dead. You know what this reminded me of? What? <laughs> Do you remember that moment in Inuyasha? <laughs> when uh, <laughs> when um, he is stuck to the fucking tree, and Kagome is like in front of him, and she like pulls pushes out her hand and it like destroys the demon but like doesn't really kill it yeah completely and like when i was reading that i was like oh my god i love that moment <laughs> you know what i love about you specifically what i'm so <laughs> no, that's not a bad thing i love that anytime we talk about anything whether it be books our friendships and relationships we could be talking about politics you're always just like it's like in that episode of inuyasha <laughs> In that episode of Spongebob. (laughs) No, those are the Uh, two things you reference the most. Oh my God. But it's funny because I can't even argue with you because it's like, damn, she's right. It really is like that episode. (laughs) You're like, damn, I see the connections here. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Thank you for uh, understanding me. (laughs) Dude, it's it's crazy to me that this book happens in the span of like, like you said, two weeks, because I mm-hmm. feel like at this point, it feels like so much happened. And mm-hmm. then it's just like, Brie, like, OK, time to go back to my dorm and go to sleep. And it's like, bitch, you just almost yeah. died. <laughs> Seriously. Like, oh and God. it's so crazy because obviously, like, Alice doesn't know what the hell is happening in Brie's life. So I can so just imagine the, the things that she's picturing. Right. Yeah. And this is the point where she calls the dad. And he's like, oh hey, Bree's God, going yes. through stuff. So the dad takes it upon himself to like set up like counseling or therapy. Yeah, he wants he wants her to talk to a therapist. And I mean, I guess it worked out in Bree's favor because she does realize that this therapist knew her mother. And so yeah. she starts thinking like, well, I mean, if she knew my mom, then maybe I can learn more things about her. And so she's going through these therapy sessions and... I'm just going to skip forward. Eventually, we learn that her mother would practice like root magic, which is like the secondary like magic system in this book, which I actually really, really liked. And root magic is like when the they take magic from ancestors, but it's very much like a give and take. I think at this point, I might be mixing a little bit of stuff, but you can kind of tell that there's like a little bit of attraction between Brie and Nick. And although it's Mm -hmm. not like completely like set in stone at this point, um, Brie does always. I don't know. You can tell that there's something between them, just like the way they stand close to each other or the way that like there was one point where he touched her face and then he went to go fix a pillow and she just had to stand there like, oh, my God. (laughs) yeah Um, that was crazy but she um (laughs) she goes back to him at this point i think and basically tells nick like you know i'm still in this we we had our oath i wasn't i wasn't lying i'm i'm gonna stick this or like stick through this because she does want to find out what happened to her um, mom i think around this point um like i said brie and nick are slowly getting closer and nick reveals to her uh that um, the mom tried to take him out of the legendborn, like life, right? His mom, yeah, yeah. and yeah, because she did. of that, she well, because I think she was just supportive of the fact that he didn't want to be a part of this because from a very young age he was, you know, forced to train for it, mm-hmm. and so it made him very like bitter. 
and it made him very unhappy. And so his mother was on, always on his side. And when she expressed like, oh, you know, if you don't want to be in it, like, it's fine. Uh, she did get punished and she got taken away, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And I think this is the part where like Nick and Brie, don't they like sleep together? Yes, I yeah. think so. Yeah. And then they wake up the next morning and they kiss. You know mm-hmm. what? I'm going to be honest. I didn't think I knew that they liked each other. I didn't think this was going to be the main romance of the book. Really? I thought it was going to be Cell. No, I mean, I thought that. Well, I mean, I don't like love, insta love, but I do feel like he cared for her. <laughs> yeah, he does. While Cell was like, I don't trust this bitch. <laughs> I know, but I think I think you could also argue that her and Cell actually have, I don't want to say more in common, but they have more to talk about. I think it's because of her trauma and him being a shadow born that yeah. they are able to connect a little bit more. And so when they do form a connection together, it definitely feels more, what's the word? Um, like it's like nicely paced, I guess. Yeah, Because it is. eventually he does like her he does grow to like her a lot and (laughs) i think it's cute because then they'll go off and do like tasks together you know like they broke into nick's family's home and (laughs) he like notices how clumsy she is and he's just like how did i ever think that you were just (laughs) fucking using us as puppets when you can't even like walk straight (laughs) (laughs) I, i i definitely liked like those moments between them yeah. Oh my but god. You know what, I but was you so know what? Wait, 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 oh, wait. But ahead. you know, you know what else I love? Go ahead. You know what else I love? I think I know. The bi representation, like the fact that Cell pretty mm-hmm. much admits that he was in love with Nick at one point mm-hmm. in their life. He's not in love mm-hmm. with him now, allegedly. <laughs> I fucking love I that. I fucking too. love that. Yeah. I was like, wait, he was in love with him. You know what? When I was looking up Legendborn, before Mm. we even said we were going to talk about this in the podcast, because like I said, my coworker said she liked it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to look it up, see what it's all about. Uh When I looked it up, I thought this book was going to have polyamory. And I don't know anything about the other books, by the way. I just want to say that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought that's what it was going to go towards. So when Cell admitted that, I was kind of like, hmm. Oh, Mm, interesting. (laughs) Dude, I wish. I wish. Because I do love that, you know, he loves Nick, but, you know, he also has this devotion to him. So I feel like it could work. But I don't think Nick yeah. has any interest. And it's funny to sell that like, way. Like you said, he does, Cell also does like Brie. Like he's starting to like her. And it feels like a little bit, a little bit like 10% of like being attracted to her at the very, very end. Um, he's attracted to her now, do you think so because there wasn't really I think much so they I, there was more friendship going on between them oh my gosh there was yeah, more friendship going on between it, them doesn't she also i don't remember exactly the moment but doesn't don't they have like a moment together when she like thinks like that she does kind of like him i don't remember the moment but i remember reading it and thinking damn poor nick poor nick I on also, the side being healed <laughs> i also he was like beat up the- <laughs> <laughs> At the very end, when uh, they're standing together uh-huh. and um, they're standing super, super close and Brie kind of backs up and she sees Nick looking at both of them angry. And she looks mm-hmm. at Sal and like, are you just doing this to try to make him jealous? But it's like kind of funny because it's like, who are you trying to make jealous? Are you trying to like get her or are you like, are you still are you still into my boy Nick? Like, I don't know. <laughs> There's like a lot of layers into that and how that could be interpreted. Yeah. Yeah. I get it, though. Who doesn't love Nick? They go through all their trials, right? And then um, near the end, Brie has, like, this vision, right? Mm. (laughs) Vision? Wait, hold on. No, she she goes to Patricia and Maria, and they go through, like, oh, what's the word? They go through, like, the past, right? And it's, it's like a trance thing. And so Are she's experiencing the thing because she sees one of her ancestors and I think her ancestors, her, her, her like great Vera, grandma. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she sees that Vera makes like a blood pact to protect her, her kids um, mm-hmm. who can only 
um, live one at a time with their powers. So that mm. basically reveals that when the mom died, she passed the power to Brie. And at first, Brie thought like, oh, my gosh, my mom's hiding this whole life from me. But mm-hmm. she even sees her mom and her mom says like, hey, if you're seeing this, it's because you've gotten into this life. And like, I know it feels like I've held secrets from you, but it's because I didn't want you to be part of this life or like she didn't want it to find her type of thing. Oh, I think that's near the end because we we missed an entire part. Remember how it Nick and Bree were, <laughs> were packed together? They, yeah. they also form a relationship, but it's frowned upon because um, the ones who are like sworn together are Nick and Cell, right? So it's weird yeah. for Nick and Bree to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So at the end, when Nick basically has to pick um, his partner... Um, and it's like a whole ceremony too like it's a whole ceremony because yes. he's gonna pick his squire and yes, i think that go. before he picks his squire brie had left right like she was like i'm done with this because she does realize that her mom did die in a car accident which is really sad and yeah. you know seeing that her mom was involved in this life she was kind of just like well why would i do the same thing so again she's going through this whole moment of you know dealing with her grief and so she leaves them she she leaves this whole society she's over it and um nick is gonna say who his new squire is and i i think everyone expected it to be Cell, right everyone and then expected it to be Bri- someone else Okay, well, then Bree yeah. shows up and because she showed up to say goodbye. I, yeah, so she shows up and that's when he pretty much announces it to everyone that he wanted her to be his squire. And everyone is shook because no everyone one is like, what? It. No one her? expected it in, in a, by the way, in a freaking ceremony room or a meeting room where uh-huh. everyone is freaking white and the only people who are people yeah. of color are all the workers. So yeah. no one expects it. And Brie kind of takes a moment and is like, you know what? My mom would want me to live the life I wanted. So I can <laughs> yeah. do whatever the fuck I want. So she accepts it. And mm-hmm. Nick is so happy. And yeah. like, it's it's such a, a a sweet moment, but it doesn't last long because um Not at all. Nick, it, it gets cut real short. Yeah, because Nick is like, Oh my god, I'm so happy. Let me go find my dad and I'll be right back. Let and me go tell like, my pops. Hold on. See, see you very soon, babe. I wouldn't lie about that. And then never see, him again. see you. See you in ten <laughs> minutes, babe. <laughs> see you in book two. Did I say that? Oh. Okay. <laughs> see but you in he, book two. No, they do see each other. No, but he leaves, and then the dad comes in and is basically like, and he's a she's, fucking asshole. Yeah, because he wanted him to be in charge, and mm. she doesn't think someone, or he doesn't think that someone like Bree should be his squire. So he's like, go back out there and say, LOL, oops, sorry, guys. That was, a, that <laughs> no was just thing. a joke. It was just a was little a joke. joke. And it sucks because what he's using as like a way to like force to her, her mm-hmm. yeah, is that he has her best friend, Alice. Remember Alice from page one and two? So <laughs> from chapter one. Friend. And it's so sad because he's basically mesmering her, but like he has one of his like henchmen doing it. Yeah, it's like his right hand man who's like and, trying to force Bree to say yes to his conditions by just and, yeah. eradicating. But but he's like erasing like the recent memories, right? So it'll be well, like oh, little yesterday, little. the day before that, a week from Two now, weeks ago. and yeah, so yeah. He's he's doing that little by little, and she's like, it's not worth it. So. Um, sure. I think they leave, <laughs> and then uh-huh. he, she goes home and tells Alice everything. And Alice is like, "What the fuck are we doing here? Like, you gotta go back." Yeah. And she's down to go too, which isn't that like against legendborn law? <laughs> yeah, it is. But you know what? She you, desperate times, desperate times. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, I think they figure out that in order to. Because I think they want to defeat Nick's dad, right? Um, um, then they have to look girl. for Excalibur because they need something that has like the strongest power. And mm-hmm. she's like, "Oh my god, let's go get Excalibur that's back in this cave." 
and yeah. um, they go and they get yeah. it, and she can feel King Arthur inside of her. She feels the power. Wait, you 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 skip, oh, did I skip something, something very important. What I skip? What I skip? Wait, okay, start over. Hold on, Evan. Remember Fitz and Evan? Yeah. So was, they're yes. going okay. through this like journey to get to Excalibur, and Evan is. <laughs> fucking revealed to have been a demon this whole time like the whole time that you know they've they've been there and not saying that evan never existed like the actual one but the demon pretty much killed him like a minute ago and and so in this moment brie is being possessed by her one of her grandmas i can't remember her name but she is no 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 (laughs) anyway let me (laughs) hold on Okay, so Brie is being possessed by one of her grandmothers because she is trying to get, you know, the main the main girl to come in. And that's when Vera possesses her body. And then that's when she goes through like this like memory, you know, sequence. And, oh, and that's the blood. She, and so Brie learns that um an heir to King Arthur pretty much like fuck I think it, it was rape, right? Yeah. And he like did that to Vera and that's why King Arthur is a descendant from from Brie and so Brie is going through like this awakening that you know they all go through but King Arthur I think he's like like she she's like going towards Excalibur and Nick is trying to pull it out but he can't and remember everyone thinks that King Arthur you know he's an heir to King Arthur and so when he can't do it it's like what the fuck. So then she goes up to it and she pulls it out. Yeah, because she is Arthur Sion. Yeah, and that's when we learn that Nick is actually Lancelot and that's when he awakens as Lancelot. Yes. But he is unfortunately taken by his dad and his dad's henchmen. So that you know, there's no moment after that between him and Bree. No, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Um, and I mean, like this this book ends in like a cliffhanger because obviously nick is taken and like they have to go and save him and so she stays with cell at the end of the book that they're gonna get her get him back yeah and that's how the book ends (laughs) and and he's just like we're gonna get our boy back i mean yours i mean uh, i mean wait 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 is it my turn or is it your turn? I know. <laughs> Whose turn is it? <laughs> oh my god. Dude. <laughs> Dude. I think I... it's funny that you read this a month ago and I read this in the span of two weeks and we talked about it in less than an hour, but it felt like so much. I it know. I know. I I was excited to talk about this book, though. Like, I I had heard so many good things. And I mean, our friend Melissa, this was her favorite read of last year. So I I was anticipating good things, like a good experience. But damn, this book was thick. And you know what? This book is not only thick. The writing in this book is so tiny. (laughs) Like, the font? (laughs) She's small. (laughs) Like, I started this, and I didn't use glasses. Now I use glasses. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly so um tracy Dude. neon please pay for my prescription thank you <laughs> i will say i was also very excited to talk about this book this feels like one of the books that after we finish talking about it i'm probably gonna go back and reread it before i read blood marked yeah <laughs> so no like, same i need to you know, mm-hmm. I, I i want to experience it again and i always feel i'm sorry i i apologize a lot i'm gonna stop apologizing i have nothing to apologize for but <laughs> never <laughs> I always feel so like unprepared when we talk about things. And then when you start talking, I'm like, oh, okay. I actually do know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Yeah. It's a lot, but I mean, it happens. And I I never want us to come off as like, oh, we're reading a script. Like I want us, I want this podcast to be like just two friends talking about a book, (laughs) you know? So it has been feeling like that recently. So it feels really good to be able to talk like that. But Mm -hmm. that being said, dude, I fucking love the writing in this book. Me too. It's so good. Yeah. I think that this author does a really good job with dialogue too because Mm -hmm. it's so natural and she's so good at making people likable. Like Mm -hmm. I fucking love Nick. And And that's (laughs) it. I really, (laughs) that's it. 
that's so funny that <laughs> that you brought up the i would not have brought it up because i almost forgot the whole cell liking nick because i think when they talk about it too Dude, isn't he what? like isn't he like oh but it's fine it's whatever everyone likes nick and i'm just like oh my god how do you know who told him no <laughs> he was in love with nick like don't don't downplay this don't downplay this for me okay i need this i but i like how this is also not one of those books that's like very love triangle you have to choose one side to like you can't like the other because i also just really love cell and i hope that whatever does happen in the future books Mm -hmm. it doesn't take away from the relationships that she has built with everyone Mm -hmm. because they were all really good yeah no i agree with you and and i feel like i also really loved nick's character a lot especially because i felt so bad for him you know having gone away from this you know fucking group you know the legend born and then feeling compelled to join it only because he really liked brie oh my god that broke my heart and i also cared for Cell because even you know knowing or learning about his past and how he's a shadow born and you know that's why and then it sucks because he was taking the role as a leader but then when you know brie came along and she was seen as more favorable wasn't nick's dad also trying to vilify him like oh well you know he's a shadow born so are we surprised you know like something happened with that and i felt so bad for him because he he definitely carried a lot of baggage as well as brie so i really like that they had that connection together of Mm -hmm. you know her having so much anger and him like feeling that yes i i um i appreciated their relationship a lot more than i did brie and nick i love brie and nick but like Mm -hmm. i said i felt like um what she had with cell was a lot deeper than just being attracted to each other yeah i I get it and 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 i feel a certain way about insta love like i do think that sometimes it works but Mm -hmm. i don't know he was so good though you can't you can't lie (laughs) he was really good you know what else i really liked i liked Mm -hmm. that brie was a tall girl like she's a tall girl i feel like in in a lot of these books they're always like small petite cute and Put also <laughs> to add to that i love that she was a confident girl because there was this one point i think it was william who was talking to her uh-huh. and then i i think she was taking off her clothes and he was like oh go ahead i you know i have someone i'm attracted to <laughs> not gonna bother me at all and she's like no don't get me wrong i want you to look i look amazing <laughs> she's like <laughs> so quick to be confident and i fucking yeah. love that yeah i love that too i really loved Bree's character probably the mm, most out of I everyone see. but then again i also really liked that conversation of grief and you know the before and after Bree. yeah and just like her interpret or not her interpretation but the fact that she was able to make that observation that people were just trying to think of themselves. I'm glad mm-hmm. you brought that up because I really like that line. I wish I could remember exactly how she said it. But the fact that it's like, oh, you're only trying to make yourself feel better by, asking by saying if I something. Feel okay. yeah. 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 Because, you know, it, it would be different if it felt genuine. But mm-hmm. the people who were asking her, it didn't feel like they actually cared. Yep. Can I say my one dislike? <laughs> Go ahead. You have only one? You only have one? Uh, it's pretty big. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, I feel a certain way when we read books that have to do with them going to school and they just mm. never fucking go to school. And like that wouldn't, that wouldn't bother me much if it weren't for the fact that there were moments where she left and she's like, I'm never coming back like near the end. Uh-huh. How is it that no one looked for her at school? You know, that's so I wish there were more moments of them interacting at school because I like the idea that none of them hung out together. Mm -hmm. So if they were to meet each other, it's like, oh, we're we're all six of us getting Panda Express at the same time. Weird. (laughs) Let's sit together. You know, like I would have liked. That's not how it works. (laughs) Do you think they all have lunch at the same time? No, no, no. But you know what I mean? Like, I wish that they would have made like excuses to see each other because they tried to make a point of not seeing each other outside of the society mm. so i i wish there would have been more moment moments of them trying to interact outside because the only time we saw that was when she went to his class once like she went to nick's class once mm-hmm. i wanted to see more of them interacting 
in the school because they're at a fucking school. Yeah. And I wish she would have like learned more about her mom, not only through like the sense of the order, but I wish she would have learned about her outside of the order too. Because I think that would have made it more impactful like yes my mom was doing all of this she was part of this but she also was a normal person like yeah, yeah. i don't know oh you mean like that. academically how was her mom how was her mom yeah because she was trying to figure it out and i hate that she was automatically it has to be this ether stuff like i wish she would have just seen it all because then throughout all of this she could have been like you know what i wasn't happy but here i am now i fucking love coming to school or like i just <laughs> I love, love being classes here. live love laugh <laughs> that's a weird way to put live, it but love, like read <laughs> i hope you understand like what i'm going for like no, I, I, I really wish understand. that she she would have learned that this was her home like not only because she goes to the society but because she loves being at school she loves in- interacting with her friends which would have been nice oh. if we saw more of alice and her other friends which she didn't have oh i but- see what you mean so you wanted her to, to cultivate a life in the yeah. school outside of the order yes I think that would have been cool, but I feel like this book was long enough, you know? Like, I don't need another hundred pages of her going to a math class. Like, I, I really I don't, don't think that would have taken a lot out, though. I feel like, you know, one of their, their, um, como se llama? One of their trials was a scavenger hunt. So it would have been nice if it was like, okay, me and Cell have to go look for this thing, but we're just going to meet at the subway. <laughs> like, and it's like, what? but that's n- not even <laughs> in the school, though. Like, it, it would be different if it's like, oh, well, let's go to the statistics class then, you know? Yeah. Or well, the- I'm sorry. I'm thinking of it looking like an American college. I don't yeah, remember where are. she was at. But, <laughs> There's um, not a subway would- <laughs> on campus. <laughs> Some do have one. But, not um, mine <laughs> mine had a burger king which honestly you could have had something better um but- <laughs> that's embarrassing don't ever admit that again <laughs> <laughs> no but i wish there would have been moments where it's like okay we have to meet at the statistic building i'm gonna pretend to get tutoring you have to pretend to like do something else like i wish there would have been that i wanted to see more of her school and honestly i didn't see anything and the fact that it was only two weeks long kind of drives me insane <sighs> Honestly, yeah. I kind of wish that this whole book, I, I, I kind of wish that this whole book would have taken place like a semester. Thank you. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I feel like, I, I mean, I'm sorry I keep bringing this up. Don't. One- don't. <laughs> I know what you're going to bring up. <laughs> Should I have like how Just many go. times Just I can it. bring it Rip up in a year? In. I really liked that in Ninth House by Lee Oh Bardugo. my god! Don't <laughs> that trigger after, warning. Ninth House. <laughs> <laughs> no, but one thing I enjoyed was that after all the craziness had happened, like you know, just going through very traumatic things, and you can think about this in like the sense of Legendborn. I would have liked if she had went through all of this, and after that, just being like, "Oh, it's summer. I have to go back home." Like I, uh, we just went through all of that together. I'll see you in a few weeks. Like, you know, it's it would have been I don't know, it would have felt realistic and it would have also like been a good point for Brie to like kind of step out of the situation and be like, oh my God, that all mm. just happened. That's kind of what Harry Potter did too. Like after every year he would go home and kind of just sit with everything that happened. I like that. He doesn't have a home. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Where would he go to the fucking <laughs> under the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys i'm just gonna i still rent this room <laughs> um wait why is a broom in here <laughs> that's a broom, why is that's a a broom closet here? harry damn that's so fucked up <laughs> um did you have any dislikes um well just the whole it taking place within two weeks i would have preferred it to have spread out for a whole semester it kind of reminds me of this one manga that I really like that apparently had an entire arc that it took like in real time it took two years to get through like the chapters and they would update weekly but in the arc it only took five hours like it was five hours of the story worth but it took two years that sucks (laughs) that would drive me insane (laughs) (laughs) um I just kind of wish that this book would have had more like, I guess black characters. I don't know. Like, I understand that it was trying to show, like, how common, you know, microaggressions happen and 
and how out of place it is, especially like with the racism with Davis near the end. And, you know, everyone making her feel like she shouldn't uh, shouldn't be worthy of, you know, even being at this campus. But it, it's like kind of crazy to me that there was like nobody else on the campus, at least from what I remember. Well, I I agree with you, but I, I, I kind of hope that's just like setting up for what might happen in the second book, because I feel like those statues that were there at the school that like depicted people of color like Bill, I think they were building something. I hope that's kind of like a foreshadowing to like she's going to meet people who also like understand root magic and ether, I guess. Um, I hope that means that there's more people out there and it's not just this society that has systematic racism. Like, I hope there's more than what is what was was perceived in this book. But I agree with you. I, I kind of wish she had at least met one person. So my overall thoughts of Legendborn is that I was really, really excited to read this book because I had really high hopes for it. You know, you know, I love fantasy, urban fantasy. I feel like I should get more into because this one, I really like the way that it like played out. And I loved going through Bree's journey with her. I... I definitely felt for her. I, I connected with her. I was rooting for her from the very beginning. I loved that her dad was still involved in the story. And I am so excited to see like what happens in Bloodmark. Like I want to see more of her with like root magic and uh, you know, just just seeing how how she is now that you know she's awakened as King Arthur. And oh my god, they're so fucking loud. <laughs> <laughs> going crazy um, i'm trying to talk louder so that hopefully it'll drown it out um just yell at me i know and i i really did enjoy like the love story stories that were presented in this in this book like oh, oh my god i lost my mind with Cell when he like pretty much confessed that he was in love with nick at one point <laughs> and you know what if they both end up together at the end of this book i'll be very happy but i doubt it and i i personally feel like even though she seems to have like more of a genuine connection with Cell, as in like the way that they're dealing with life, I should say. I think that she's going to end up with Nick. Like, I'm pretty sure she's going to end up with Nick. I have no idea what happens in Blood Marks, but mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. I really loved both of the love interests, though. Like, I really cared for Cell and I really cared for Nick. And any time that an author does that, like, you know, because it sucks when it's a love triangle, but like one of them is obviously like better than they obviously, the other. Yeah, like they obviously either suck or you don't care for them or they're not really developed that well. Like I definitely understand everyone's motivations and I absolutely love that and I'm excited to see what happens next. I also feel that her being awakened as King Arthur was a little bit like, I mean, I, I kind of expected it. But I do love that that's why she and Nick have a connection when he, you know, awoke as Lancelot. I have no idea about this fucking legend, but I know that somehow those two, are they like, yeah. they're not lovers though, are they? No, they're best friends. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. I was like, I think they're best friends. They're best but... friends who kiss sometimes. Is that so weird? <laughs> no, I, I mean, we, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Did we have to stop doing that? <laughs> funny because you just had you just set that up so perfectly <laughs> anyway moving on um mm -hmm. i really really loved this book and anytime that any book plays with like a legend and maybe i don't know everything about that legend but they describe it well enough for me to kind of be on board i always appreciate that i was down for it uh yeah and i i don't know i just genuinely loved reading this book I love it so much. Like I, I immediately started the second one. I haven't gone to completing it though because Chelly and I have a long list of reads, <laughs> so oh, yeah. I did put a pause on that. I would, I would rate Legendborn a five out of five. Oh my god, dude! It's <sighs> so freaking good, dude. I can't wait to read it again. But what did you we, say I was gonna give it? Three point seven. A three point seven five. Yeah. Okay. Um. I want to say, I want I want to connect. I want to connect. The connect reason, with me or connect with what? I'm always connected to you. Oh, the, re you. 
The reason why my coworkers brought this book up is because I don't know if you know this about me, but I mm. fucking love chivalry like so fucking much. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's you know, like such a weird thing. Um, I don't think you've ever told me that, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna geek out for a second, just like I did last time we read a book that had historical elements i guess i fucking love king arthur so much oh wow well, damn i actually recently read a book like a few months ago that also talked a lot about like the social code which is like you know like how to be how to be chivalrous and i'm all for that shit i, I did all for that shit I didn't know that about you. Damn. Ugh. Fun fact. One of my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog games is about King Arthur. Fun fact. So You never told me that. <laughs> well, you never asked. Why would I ask you about King Arthur? <laughs> Why do you think every time you come, I bow? Like, th- is that? Like, no. You're just kind of like, oh, that's just Chelly on a normal Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I should have seen that. I fucking love anything that has to do with like knights and just like moral code and Mm. just being there for each other no matter what. Because I mean, okay, if I if I were to like push a little further, that's basically found family. King Arthur was found family. And I fucking love that shit. That being said, I love all the fucking characters in this book. (laughs) And I just think that Brie is such a good main character. I know that we've read a few books where I always say, like, this is my favorite female protagonist. Yeah. I feel like she she is a great one. Like she she is my favorite female protagonist only because she's like she's flawed and also willing to like work through it you know what i mean like she had so many things that affected her that made her feel like after brie that felt very dejected and stuff but it was a good way to show that even while dealing with this grief you do kind of have to push forward and near the end when nick chooses her to be her squire or sorry his 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 squire squire. Mm -hmm. um i love the fact that she like is like okay now i'm living for me and i'm like dude i love this development (laughs) <laughs> yeah i don't know it's probably because i'm a king arthur stan but i would also give this an arthurian head <gasps> what <laughs> yeah dude i fucking love king arthur i didn't know that you loved king arthur <laughs> i'll send you all of my sonic king arthur edits i'm good <laughs> <laughs> oh okay um okay delete, i'm just delete. kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> you're just, just, kidding. Kidding. Like, just typing away <laughs> <laughs> you're like i already said all of them actually <laughs> while you were talking <laughs> i didn't know that just but ignore wow. those hundred texts i'm so glad that you like this book yeah and i get so sad because this kind of feels very like skin of the sea where i mean? really like the book i really really like the book and i give it a five out of five but i feel like i didn't appreciate it enough while i was reading it because both you and I have to read like 10 books Hello. in a month. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh-huh. Like after I finished reading it, every time I finish one, I'm, I like write down the ones that I need to reread. Mm-hmm. And so far I have three on that. list. A skin of the <laughs> sea, legend born and what? Another one, but I can't say, but oh, like, I, <laughs> I don't know what you're it's talking about. But- <laughs> anyway, on our next Stop episode, come out. back. we're going to talk about Cinder. <laughs> but i do want to say we moved around our calendar a lot this month yeah but i think ending this month with legendborn was really good yeah i know (laughs) it was a five out of five book oh god we've been just are we gonna read bloodmarked yeah you know what? i'm gonna say yes but we need to figure that out because we also said we wanted to talk about soul of the deep and we haven't gotten to it so um yeah eventually we will Okay. It's going to be a trilogy, though, and I I hate waiting. I hate waiting. I know you do. I know you do. I know okay, you do. I wow, do, too. Call me out. But- call me out. <laughs> <laughs> I just start. I know you do. And you know what's another thing you hate? <laughs> Dude. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, everyone, 
um, who is listening to us in podcast form, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, anywhere you get your podcasts on. Thank you so much. If you can leave a rating of five stars and a review, that would be amazing. And you know what? The ratings, they, it takes like five seconds to do it. So while I'm talking, if you just go back to like our page where it says our name and, you know, appreciate our cover because it looks fucking amazing and give us a five star. That would be amazing because that helps a lot with um, getting recommended on um, our podcast site. You know, another way, if you just want to go above and beyond by showing us a little bit more love, we did make a Patreon. And through our Patreon, we would love to eventually form book clubs. And we just want a way, or we just want to have a way for our readers to let us know what they would like to see, right? Like, what kind of books do you want us to talk about? So it would be really nice if you would check that out as well. You can find us on patreon.com slash book fix. If you are able to help us on Patreon either, that's fine. It also really helps if you want to um, tell your friends, family, or loved ones about us because the best type of exposure is through word of mouth. If you are watching us on YouTube, thank you. If you can like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We post every Tuesday and Thursday. Can I just interject really quickly? Yeah. Um, Outside, there are like people throwing around like... <laughs> What are they called? Fire logs? I don't even fucking know. They're having a fire log party outside. So if you just hear a lot of slamming, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. My neighbors, every every day, they do play monkey in the middle with bricks. So <laughs> and I, you know, what's happening. I just can't fight them on that. You know, live your life. <laughs> I will join them after this episode is over. <laughs> no, I won't because we're... We're going to talk about Cinder after this. Oh, my gosh. You're right. Um, At the end of our episodes, um, Yahira rolls a digital dice. And if it lands on an even number, we read a positive review of the book we talked about. But if it lands on an odd number, we read a negative review of the book we talked about. Um, We are not connected to these reviews at all. They just stay in the air. And that's it. (laughs) So thank you, everyone who is listening. And Yahira, if you want to give us a number, that'd be amazing. Yeah, give me a sec. I'm sending you a picture. Of what? You the know. guys playing with bricks outside? <laughs> oh my god. They really are just <laughs> fucking up some logs outside. <laughs> I told you! I don't know what's happening outside. Yeah, Hera said- sent me a picture. <laughs> she sent me a video, um, or a live. They really are just cutting bricks right outside your home. <laughs> right outside my fucking ventana. Oh my, that's window. <laughs> wow dude anyway let me roll this dice okay okay we got a five this one comes from ris sasaki who gave it a one out of five stars they wrote this was just a mess of teenage hormones even though i truly liked and appreciated what this book was trying to do i must say that it suffered a lot with the fact that the author wanted to put a ton of things and topics inside a small jar and she tried to make it better by creating a book with too many pages in my opinion also do i need to say how unnecessary and utterly cliche was the romance no chemistry at all cringy and a little bit creepy if you stop to think about the fact that brie is only 16 years old and nick just like sal would say what a prick i absolutely adored the social commentary that this book brought but unfortunately the main focus on of this story was that the legend born just felt too weak and a copy of too many ya fantasies that you could find out there in the world thank you so much for listening and we'll see you on thursday bye Glad we filmed this one first. I told you, it's just there was just so much to this book that I I needed to get it out. I've been holding it in for a month, Chelly. You really made me wait a month. I'm so sorry. We talked no. a lot. <laughs> I know. No, for oh, dude, we really did. <laughs> Wouldn't that be uh, funny? Actually, no, it wouldn't. If I was like, shut up, I don't. I didn't hit record. <laughs> don't say that. I will literally <laughs> cry. My no, my computer. Record. Wait, what? Hey, record, I promise. Link. <laughs> My computer, there's like a notification that came up that said restart required. I was like, no, we will not restart right now. <laughs> you better not restart right now. <laughs> that would suck. Oh my god. I don't want to have to address another elephant. Yeah, no. No, no, not this one.